First of all, I'd like to thank all the organizers for inviting me to this event. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, today I want to talk about some phase transition and crypto phenomena. I guess uh, all of you agree that we understand very well the critical phenomena, at, at least in the two-dimensional system. But today I want to talk about some phase transition in almost equilibrium system, but it is driven out of equilibrium by uh, you know, allowing spin move in space freely. So uh, the, the motivation, so uh, let me just start with a brief review on the Fisher model. The Fisher model is kind of a uh, Typical model which shows the uh, optimal transition. So, this model consists of particles, and each particle can move uh, in two-dimensional space, and it has some. So it has some. Uh, it means the position of the particle, and theta I means the direction of the velocity of each particle. So, but at each time, the particle can move to other place with the, some velocity vector. Of a given uh, constant spin. So in that sense, this particle is, has some activity, so it, it uses some internal energy to produce some uh, this kind of motion or something. But in addition, it, it has some uh, important interaction, so called uh, velocity aligning interaction, which means that each time it, it, this particle updates its uh, directional velocity by taking the local average of the motion of its neighbors. In this sense, so somehow we can say that it, it, it mimics some kind of uh, uh, ferromagnetic interaction among uh, continuous spin. But, but uh, we all know that in two-dimensional critical phenomena, if you have some continuous symmetry, then you, you cannot have long-range order in the equilibrium system. But in this case, this system has some activity here by this uh, speed motion. So, uh, very surprisingly, this model has some uh, long-range order. Okay, so when when there is a uh, this order strength is small, then the order parameter given by <coughs> this uh, is, uh, velocity of all particle, it has a non-vanishing amplitude when the, the, the noise is small, but it decreases con almost continuously. With, you know, so it is an example of uh, order disorder phase transition in two-dimensional system in the presence of a continuous symmetry. So actually, since this work, it triggers a lot of uh, other research to understand the emergent phenomena coming from the activity. This time is also here, every time it updates its uh, velocity angle from the local average of the velocity of its neighbor, but it, is all, it also contains some noise here. That time is the strength of the, uh, this motion. So, uh, more recently, some people consider some kind of discretized version of the Fisher model. Okay, so, in the original Fisher model, the, the, the single variable is, is a continuous variable from 0 to 2 pi. Okay. You can generalize this model by uh, discretize the, the, the spin. For example, you can uh, think of uh, some kind of uh, this uh, so-called two-stage clown model, actually clown model. So in this case, you discretize the spin into the, this direction. And then, so if in, in this represent representation, the, the clock spin means the velocity, okay? Basically, they are the equivalent to each other. Another representation of velocity. And the uh, velocity aligning interaction becomes the ferromagnetic interaction of these spins. Okay? And then each spin moves according to its spin state. Okay? So if my spin state prefer here, then I will just move to that direction. And in this, in this case, the noise, noise, the noise comes through the, the temperature, effect temperature for the ferromagnetic interaction. And uh, this just this kind of version also shows this uh, uh, phase transition, but uh, 
actually, it turns out that the, the phase transition in this, uh, that the flocking phase transition can be understood in terms of so-called uh, liquid gas transition with a phase coexistence. For example, if the density is high or the, the noise is low, then the, we have some uh, uh, liquid phase where every particle I mean, forms a liquid condensate and move in concert to the Case breaking, by the metric breaking. But if the density is low and the, the, the noise is high, then there is no collective uh, motion. So if the system is in the gas state. But in the inter intermediate area, you can, uh, as you can see here, there is some kind of phase separation. Okay, so region of uh, get, uh, low density area, gas phase and liquid phase. So we have some phase coexistence. This is a very specific uh, feature of this uh, flocking phase transition. So, and uh, let me draw this kind of picture. So, uh, I just explained the, the, the Vichek model and the uh, flocking phase transition. It's actually, that kind the Vichek time model or the, this active uh, full state time model can be written in. in this is this line stands for the Fischer light. Okay. So here uh, we have some in the Fischer representation. You can say something about the velocity, the velocity of line interaction. But in the Q state uh, Planck model representation, you can think about some, some spin model. Okay. But it, along this line, the spin and velocity basically the same. Okay. Spin is slaved by the velocity or vice versa. And we have some uh, aligning interaction. But once we have this spin representation or uh, velocity representation, one can uh, very naturally think about some, some model system where this uh, velocity, positional degrees of freedom, space degree, degree of freedom, freedom, and spin, and internal degrees of freedom is decoupled from each other. Okay. So let me just uh, draw some uh, additional axis, another axis direction here. So along this axis, spin is no longer is equivalent to the velocity, okay? so then we can treat the spin and velocity fully independently. Okay? And of course, along this along this line, we should consider some spin-spin interaction. And along this line, we have some velocity alignment. So in most general case, we can uh, think of some model system we are sitting around here. Okay? So we have some independent degrees of freedom, velocity and spin, and uh, velocity aligning interaction and spin uh, settlement harmonic or anti-harmonic interaction in, okay? So it, this, this is the kind of most general situation you can think of, starting from consideration of uh, feature model, okay? But uh, as, you, as you can imagine easily, this general situation should be very difficult to, to study. So uh, as a first step, I just propose to think about just, just looking at this axis. This axis means I do not have any uh, velocity aligning interaction. Okay? So I have a spin, some thermodynamic interaction, and they can move along in the, in the two dimensional space, but there is no uh, active velocity aligning interaction. Okay? So I call some, some models case along this line as a, some a Brownian or passive uh, spin model. Okay? No, not, not at all. Uh, uh, here, not. not. Along this line, there is no correlation. Here, you can define such a model where, where we have some correlation between the two. Okay. So first, I, I, I just focus on along this line. So uh, Brownian path model. So Brownian path model is defined in, in this way. So I have some, I have this two-dimensional lattice here, and I have n particles with fixed density rho. And each particle is uh, specified by the position r, position vector r, and spin vector r. And I assume some uh, local uh, uh, thermodynamic uh, path model uh, interaction. Okay? This means that spin here, sitting here, is interacting with the neighbor within the fixed distance denoted by this. The spin interaction is a uh, range. And uh, I do, uh, 
I consider this uh, discrete time dynamics. So each time, particle just perform random diffusion. There is no correlation, just, just pure diffusion, testing motion. But uh, they uh, interact with, uh, their, their spin degrees of freedom interact with the others by, by adopting some metropolis algorithm type algorithm, Monte Carlo rule or heat bath algorithm, anything you, can, you, you like. So in, in this case, I have uh, some model parameters, particle density and interaction range and diffusivity of the, of the particle and the temperature. No, no, this oh, off-lattice no. model. Off, off -lattice. I can define the lattice model, but here, no. Okay, so uh, people go into the story of Brownian particle model, I, I, I just to remind you of a known fact of phase transition of uh, particle model on lattice, equilibrium particle model. This is a, a dimensionality of state, spatial dimensionality, and and this is the cube, the theory of cube. So we are mostly interested in this two-dimensional two case. And if Q is less than four, then we know that this system has a phase transition, continuous phase transition from disordered state and the ordered state. But if Q is equal to or larger than four, then we, this system has a discontinuous phase transition, Q above four. But, uh, and what about mean field? In the mean field here, mean field here, we have a continuous mean field uh, phenomena when Q is equal to or less than two, but above, above two, we have a discontinuous phase transition. This is well known. Equilibrium parts model on lattice. And uh, I want to ask what is the nature of the phase transition along in this two dimension? We should we still have this continuous and discontinuous phase transition or not? No. That's the point, but no. Okay, so there are some features in, in my model. So, my model is uh, definitely in non-equilibrium situation. So that's, that's because uh, I have some definite Hamiltonian and temperature for the spin degrees of freedom, but they're, they're, the, the motion of the particle is totally random. Okay? So that means uh, we can say that there is a, basically it, uh, this model is in contact with two heat beds, one bed at temperature T for heat spin degrees of freedom, but there is another heat bed in the infinite temperature with the position degrees of freedom. So, so there is kind of some internal heat flow. So heat flow drives the system out of equilibrium. And uh, in this case, the, the particle moves in time. So it, in, in the sense that this uh, Brownian motion uh, induces some uh, dynamic disorder system. Uh, if the disorder is quenched, then there are some uh, theoretical arguments which, which says that if you have some, uh, suppose you have some uh, system with discontinuous phase transition, but if you inc include some uh, quenched disorder, then this quenched disorder suppresses the, dis uh, suppress the discontinuous phase transition. That's, that's the general uh, argument. Okay. But uh, in my system, I do not have a quenched disorder. I have some kind of annealed disorder or dynamic disorder. What's the role of this dynamic disorder? And also, uh, if particle can, so this particle move uh, interact with this particle, but at the same time, this particle interacts with some, some particle in the other area. So in the sense that this uh, diffusion induces kind of effective uh, long range interaction. So if this motion is too fast, then we, we expect main field phase transition. But I, I think it, this, is, this is very unlikely because this is very uh, process. Anyway, so we did some Monte Carlo uh, study. So this shows the time trajectory of, of, of some, some quantity here. I plot the so-called uh, um, arc equation density. So this is a free state parts model. Okay, so each spin can be in a state of spin one and two and three. Okay, so 
ms means the fraction of spins that is in a particular spin state. Here, as you can see, uh, you can see some kind of uh, spontaneous symmetry, symmetry breaking. So in, in, this, uh, in, in this moment, this orange spin becomes a majority, and, but this is a finite uh, system simulation. So after, after a long time, uh, at this moment, uh, this green is, is a uh, dominant uh, spin species. So uh, from this Monte Carlo simulation, I, uh, we measure uh, some, some typical thermodynamic quantity, the, the order parameter, the parameter as a function of in inverse temperature. And uh, this shows the fluctuation of, uh, of this order parameter. And uh, although we do not have some, uh, some global Hamiltonian, we have some local Hamiltonian describing the energy of a, uh, each particle, okay? So in the, Using that Hamiltonian, we can define the, the energy density, and this is the, the fluctuation of the energy density. And this is for the easing case, Q is equal to two, and the, you, you can uh, realize that this picture looks quite similar to, the, to those we have from the Ising case. Okay? Here, density is fixed. You can control density, but here I, I just fix the density, but only uh, control the spin spin interaction strength. <laughs> capital L, the L by L two dimensional scale lattice, square, square geometry. Yeah, density is fixed. Velocity is also fixed, I, I take 0 0.5. And Actually, the velocity and interaction uh, range, okay? So the, right. the ratio is important, but here, interaction range is one, and velocity is, uh, speed is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this is for Q equals to two, and we do the same thing for other values of Q. This shows the plot for fixed state uh, model. Okay. As you can see, uh, in the equilibrium case, we know that it, it, show, it should show some discontinuous phase transition, but it, it shows some uh, feature of the system having the continuous phase transition. So, in order to have, uh, I mean, a more close, closer look at the data, we measure the in the parameter, okay, and these are the data for, of the window parameter for Q easing case and five case plug uh, model case. So uh, as you can see, there is some uh, cosine behavior here and here. It, it, uh, a lot, it signet, this is a signature of the phase transition point. Okay? But if you increase the, the, the value of Q, you may notice some small dip here. Okay? Dip here, small dip here. And if you have some uh, first order phase in tr transition, then it, it is typical to have some uh, very deep, deep deep of this in the parameter. Usually it goes to minus infinity at the phase transition. But I have a very, uh, I have a deep here, but this is a very mild. Okay? It, it, it never goes to, neg to the negative side. So actually it's not, it's not easy to conclude whether this is a, a Continuous phase transition or discontinuous phase, phase, phase transition out of only this uh, in the parameter data. So we we look at the histogram. So histogram usually one consider his, histogram of order parameter. Okay, so order parameter you measure the, the from the Monte Carlo time series. You can, you can construct this histogram. And if you are if you are in the uh, ordered state, then you have some histogram some um, non-zero value. Okay? But if you are in the uh, disordered phase and then you have some disordered peak here, okay. and if you have phase phase for existence, then you have some mixture of this uh, disordered peak and ordered peak at the same temp temperature. But uh, I would like to suggest 
um, another uh, histogram, so for the skin fraction I introduced before. So I measure the fraction of uh, particles in a particular skin state. And then I construct a histogram or distribution function of this, uh, this skin fraction. So if you are in the disorder state, then all spin fraction should be around one over Q. So there will be some fluctuation. But I have Q, Q peaks at this one over Q. But if you are in the ordered state, then I should have some single peak here. This is a dominant species. And I have some uh, a subdominant, uh, subdominant peaks of Q minus one diff uh, other species. And if we have a uh, phase, phase for existence, then we should have three peaks for, for that. Okay, uh, let me show you the, the data here. First, just, just to look at the, the lower, lower row. Okay. This is coming from the e two-dimensional equilibrium lattice model okay, and six-stage path model. Okay. So we know that it, it has a discontinuous phase transition. And this field curve means the histogram of the order parameter, and this line is for the spin fraction. Okay? As you can see here, in the disordered phase, I have two disordered peaks for the spin fraction. And in the, in the ordered state, I have well, one uh, the ordered peak and two minus one disordered peak. But in the intermediate temperature, I have three peaks. Okay? So the cent central peak, stands for the disordered state, and the, the, the other two peaks uh, stands for the ordered state. So actually, we, we clearly have this uh, is for existence. Okay? But uh, if you look at the histogram data for the six-state uh, uh, pass model, there is no phase for, for, uh, there is no phase for existence for this spin fraction. Okay? So this is a clear indication of the continuity of the, I mean, there's no phase for existence. If you just look at the, the, hist uh, the order parameter histogram, then you may notice that kind of small bump here, okay? So actually, uh, I guess that, uh, the small dip is just coming from this, uh, some kind of uh, this uh, small peak structure, but I, I think it's, it's part of some, uh, some shape, uh, universal shape of that uh, order parameter distribution. And the, the same is true for other values of Q. So, so <coughs> that, that picture also can be seen from this uh, time series. But, uh, and uh, I'd like to understand why uh, my numerical data suggests that there is no discontinuous phase transition. Then why, why we, I do not have the, uh, continuous phase transition instead of uh, continuous phase transition. So, I just I look at the time scales in this problem. Actually, there are two different time scales. One is the diffusion time scale. Okay? This is just a trivial time scale, which describes the, the, the spatial motion of the particle. I mean, density uh, correlation propagation. And in, in addition, we, we also have some uh, another time scale for for the propagation of spin-spin correlation. Okay? So, in order to measure this correlation, I, I measure this. Uh, equal time spin correlation function starting from the disorder state. So uh, initially, uh, this uh, correlation function decays very fast, but uh, as time goes on, uh, it will, uh, the correlation builds up. Okay? And from the scaling plot, uh, I divide by e to the sum power, and then I have very nice uh, data collapse. And this uh, analysis shows that spin spin correlation has um, uh, time scale uh, described by this relaxation uh, on CI, which is around 2.3 for all values of Q. So definitely this value is larger than this value. Okay? The spin correlation propagation is a slower process than the density, density propagation. So I would like to combine these two factors. I mean, to give you some uh, some intuitive argument for the absence of phase coexistence. So suppose that you have some phase coexistence, okay? So, but at the present moment, your system is in some disordered state. And then, 
we are in the finite size system, so at some moment you have some nucleation of some ordered area, okay? But example, so we have some nucleation of this area. If you have some phase coexistence, then this uh, this domain should increase. Because there's, there's a mechanism, I mean, the mechanism for the phase coexistence. But here uh, we have, uh, so for the phase coexistence, this domain should increase. But at this, at this increase is determined by the, this time scale. On the other end, uh, there is a, another time scale, diffusion time scale is there. So this means, uh, suppose you, you, are, you are an individual spin belonging to this ordered uh, nucleation, nucleated domain, okay? Then on the one hand, you try to turn the spins of, uh, of this neighbor into the red domain. Red uh, blue color. Okay, but on the end, on the, on the other end, you are just uh, you are just a, a drift, I mean, diffuse in the space. Okay, so before you create a spin a correlation, you just disappear. You just dis dis go into the disordered domain. So that means you, you cannot have this. Uh, Big domain of uh, ordered space. So, I, so th this, this shows uh, that uh, diffusion suppresses the space coexistence. This is our uh, argument. This is some uh, some partial summary. Okay, so I, I, I introduced uh, this passive Brownian pass model, and then there are two time uh, scales, and due to uh, This inequality, this inequality suppresses the coexistence. This, this is the reason why we have a continuous phase drift in this case. And then I, I move on to some, some very similar problem. Large velocity. Large velocity. But it, it, this, I think it, it, this just, uh, if you just renormalize re re the length scale in, un in units of this uh, velocity, it yeah, is just yeah. order one. But if you think about some uh, levy flight type of, right. then at some moment you, you, I, I, you expect some yeah. increase. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I but uh, here the the special degrees of freedom is just from from the spin degrees of freedom so it's just right right mm. I'm not quite sure but uh, if you have some boundary structure, but this boundary structure also destroyed by the diffusion. Oh, okay. I, I have no answer right now. Uh, uh, so, uh, this is uh, uh, almost the same. So I just consider this uh, uh, clock spin. And I have this Hang model Hamiltonian instead of Hang uh, model Hamiltonian. Okay? Everything else is the same. So uh, actually, this Hang model has some some rich structure, uh, even in this uh, equilibrium situation. Okay? So uh, 
the phase transition on, of this clock model in two-dimensional lattice system is rather well understood in, in the context of renormalization of theory, okay? So, so I have some uh, discrete, discrete spin system here. This is a, a, a three state clock model spin. And this is a, a discrete spin, okay? So th this, this discrete means can be, uh, I mean, taken into account by just consider the continuous spin, so-called X, Y spin, but you add this, uh, this additional field, okay? So this field prefers this, this discrete state. Okay? So, so you can say that uh, this is a hard spin and this is some soft spin. Okay? In the algebraic sense, uh, these two models should be equivalent. And then it is very important that uh, this variable is, is not extended, but it, it, this is, uh, there is some periodicity in, in this uh, interaction. We call this as the muon symmetry. Okay? So uh, actually this periodicity plays a very important role. So if you just uh, ignore the periodicity of this variable and replace it with some, this, uh, some other continu continuous field from minus infinity to infinity, then you should introduce some uh, some other uh, other excitation, which I mean takes the role of this periodicity. Okay. So this p state clock model can be mapped into the Gaussian model, simple Gaussian model, which is perturbed by this uh, symmetry breaking field here, and also vortex anti vortex excitation coming from the, uh, this periodicity of the and. It, when p is larger than four, when p is less than four, it's almost uh, very similar to the uh, task model <coughs> So when p is larger than two, actually this system has two phase transition. One is coming from this symmetry breaking field, and one is coming from this vortex and transition. Okay? So there are two phase transitions. Okay, so. I mentioned uh, so the vortex, anti-vortex. Uh, what is vortex and anti-vortex? So this is a square lattice here. And if you move along this bracket in the anti, I mean, counterclockwise direction, and the spin also rotate in the, in the counterclockwise direction. So the, this, this kind of excitation is called the vortex anti so globally, it looks like a, some typhoon or hurricane, something like that. Okay? And if you have this kind of spin configuration, if you rotate in the counterclockwise in the, along the flocket, the spin rotates in the clockwise direction. Okay? So this excitation is called anti-vortex excitation. Okay? This, uh, this is coming from the periodicity of, of the spin variable. So actually, this vortex and anti-vortex effective interaction and, and this interaction potential is just given by the logarithm of the distance. Okay? So there is an effective attraction. Okay? So I say that uh, the Clang model can be represented by the, uh, the Gaussian model. Gaussian model is basically uh, critical, you know, cr critical state. So the order parameter here has some power decay. So usually they call this as a quasi long range ordered phase. And this quasi long range order can be broken by this uh, vortex anti vortex excitation. And the RG theory predicts that uh, the finite size scaling exponent at, at this uh, tension should take the 2 over p squared. When p is smaller than 4, uh, then this. Uh, this uh, symmetry breaking field is uh, too relevant. Relevant, <laughs> yes, yes. So there is no a Gaussian model. So, and yeah, the, this uh, vortex, anti-vortex, uh, driven at, at this transition, uh, this the theta takes the universal value of one over a. But uh, when this spin, uh, the, the symmetry breaking field becomes relevant, uh, the, this exponent takes uh, another universal value p over p squared. This is a 
And actually, the transition at here and here are uh, some mathematical map, so called geology map, so both belongs to the so famous uh, GKT transition. So now I, I going back to the Brownian parts model, Brownian um, star model. So it shows some uh, typical uh, snapshot of this configuration, low density, low, uh, low temperature, high temperature, and intermediate temperature, or high, high density and low density. And the color means the, the direction of the skin. So when uh, interaction strength is very large, then you, you can see some uh, long range order. Okay? So this is a long range order case where the order parameter is order one here. But in the, in the high temperature region, in the high temperature, you can see uh, a lot of, uh, there's no uh, uh, long range order, okay? And uh, from this skin configuration, you can also identify the location of uh, vortex and anti-vortex. And th this shows that vortex and anti-vortex. You can see some uh, three vortex and anti-vortex in this order case. But in the intermediate case, you can see some, some structure, okay? Because this is a critical phase and here, this the vortex and anti-vortex is always uh, it's a bound, bounded pair, so they cannot uh, displace critically here before. And uh, this is the order parameter. So it, it looks very similar to the equilibrium situation. And uh, this is the order parameter. And to have, to have some more uh, quantitative analysis, I redo some uh, finite size scaling analysis the order parameter. And uh, this shows the effective exponent of the order parameters uh, finite size scaling. It's varying the inverse temperature here. So as I said before, we, there are two universal value one eight and two over p square, which monitors the, which, which is a guideline of KT, KT transition. Of, so, and as you can see, uh, I can see clearly some, the, the phase transition point here, which is, this is the point where we have a vortex and anti vortex uh, unbinding transition. But here, uh, this is uh, this is this marks the point where this uh, symmetry breaking field becomes relevant, and it's rather uh, noisy. But uh, still, you can see some indication of phase transition, and the exponent is very consistent with the that. Uh, picture. And in this case, we also study this, uh, the problem by varying the density. Okay? So here I keep the, the, the coupling constant fixed, but I just vary the, the particle density. We have a very similar uh, KT. So, uh, Basically, the, my numerics suggests that even with this uh, particle diffusion, the nature of the transition seems to be the same. Okay? The equilibrium situation. I try to understand why it is very close to the equilibrium situation. So, just so we have two phase transition. So I, I just focus on the first transition where the vortex and anti-vortex combine. Okay? So, as I said before, the when you have this vortex and anti-vortex in, in this uh, say clung, uh, clung model, there is, the effective interaction energy is just given by this. Uh, so these two, the, the relative uh, I mean, displacement of, of, of these two pair is just given by this type of type, type two, type in, in equilibrium, okay? So we, I have a logarithmic, uh, and I have some common law in here. Okay. But actually, this, uh, this logarithmic uh, interaction is very marginal, okay? in, in the sense that uh, the energy scale, energy scale, energy should scale logarithmically with the system size, and also the entropy should scale log logarithmically with, with the system size, because uh, you, should, you can count a number of uh, degeneracy of, of vortex kt within, within this. 
So if you just change the temperature, sometimes entropy wins, means uh, unbinding. And if temperature is low, then energy dominates. So but now, uh, I, we add uh, particle diffusion, okay, particle diffusion. Particle diffusion means that the, the vortex core has additional, additional uh, fluctuation, but that must be diffusive also. So particle diffusion should introduce another thermal noise, on correlated thermal noise, because I just consider random diffusive motion of particles. So actually this uh, particle diffusion just introduced this additional thermal noise, so it just uh, renormalize. Uh, if you just rescale the temperature scale, then nothing changes. So this is the reason why I, I have the same phase transition for the vortex and anti-vortex uh, combining transition. But the other, the, the other transition, the symmetry breaking transition. If I increase a, a particle density quite a lot, then Actually, uh, this is a finite size scaling analysis of this component, and so this this dotted line is the uh, is the prediction of RG theory. But uh, this numerics suggests that the transition transition point is around here. And there are some some uh, discrepancy from the prediction of RG theory. Actually, we do not have any understanding for that because whether it is coming from some very slow convergence near the KB, KB, KB transition. Usually, we have some logarithmic expression to scale at the KB, KB transition. So on the other end, uh, I cannot apply the argument in the previous case because uh, uh, this transition is dual to the original KT transition, but this duality transformation includes all kinds of non-local uh, modification of the model. So, uh, actually, uh, we do not have any theory for that, so we, we should uh, work on it. So, uh, now i going back to the first uh, page here. I, I propose to add another axis here, and as a starting point, I just uh, sitting along this line, okay? No activity. But of course, uh, I think the, the, this, this area where I have a spin and uh, also spin interaction and also alignment interaction, and when these two interactions are, when these two degrees of freedom are strongly affecting each other, now I guess uh, that must be much more interesting. Okay? And actually, as a starting point, we, we did uh, some, some work from here. here. For example, we, uh, the, the system we are currently working on is a so-called two-species switching model. Okay. So I have a red particle and blue particle, and they are doing the B-check di uh, spin alignment of, uh, interaction. But alignment of the between same species uh, particles, but anti-alignment with uh, We find some. We also find some uh, this uh, phase coexistence, but we have we found actually two different uh, phase coexistence states, namely these these uh, these uh, in this phase coexistence state that uh, part uh, denser, there is a kind of density wave, density wave, and they are moving in a particular direction, and in in the future. In, in our case, we, we found that in some case, uh, these two different species move in the same direction. Uh, we call this a parallel flocking. And but sometimes it, uh, we it, this uh, I mean density wave propagate in the opposite direction. We call this as an anti-parallel flocking. We, uh, it shows some there was something fun funny in this area and. <laughs> Maybe next time I can say something more about Thank you for your attention.